We are Modern CPA. Our purpose is to provide valuable information to small business owners. On our podcast, Profit Points, we discuss business how-tos, give tax tips, and dig into real-life experiences in the crazy world of running your own business. If you find this podcast helpful, then like, subscribe, and follow us on social media. Welcome everybody to Profit Points, where we talk to professionals, industry experts, and other small business owners about the crazy world of being in business. And today we have Matt Hamlin here, and Matt is running his own business, and we want to hear from him. Tell us a little bit about yourself, Matt. Yeah, how you doing? Hi, guys. Good, Uh, how are you? Good. Uh, I'm Matt Hamlin. I live in the uh, greater Philadelphia area. And I started my business called Online Parts Depot in 2016, I think it was. And uh, we help salvage yards throughout the country manage their e-commerce stores. So be it eBay uh, or Amazon or Facebook Marketplace, uh, we're mostly pretty heavy with the eBay side of it. Um, But I started doing that. And um, uh, that's, uh, like I said, it started in 2016. So um, I've been doing that since. I've had... uh, uh, been in the salvage art industry my whole life, but this particular business I started then. So that's amazing. I, when I think of salvage yards, I think of like going to a junkyard and pulling parts. And but this is very different, and probably very different for the people who own the salvage arts too, right? So, like, how does that yep. work? Yeah, that's that's the stigma we are always trying to shake in this industry, right? You think junkyard, you think Sanford and Son. Um, you think oil, you think grease, stuff like that. And it's just, it's just not like that at all. I mean, we were recycling before it was cool. It's the yeah. oldest industry in the world that was the first thing recycled, which was car parts. Right. And awesome. yeah. I think over 95% of the car is recycled and a lot of wow. it's reused. So that's what we specialize in is um, the end of life, the ELV vehicles. And what our clients do is they'll they'll get cars from auction or if you crash your car and they get the cars from there and then they properly process them at the end of their life by properly disposing of the oils, um, any fluids in them. And, um, you know, they take the parts off them, salvage what's good. So as you said, you have the stigma of the junkyard mm-hmm. and you know, we'll still call ourselves junkyards, but really they're salvaging good parts, good reusable mm-hmm. parts off the vehicle and then for resale. So how does that work then with the uh, resale of these parts? Do you inventory all of the parts that are at the salvage yard? How big of a project is that? Yeah, it's it's quite the undertaking. And my dad had always worked at a salvage yard and he had a yard. So I worked there and I really, really found my love with this, with this industry in doing inventory. So for us particularly, what we do is, you know, we'll take your inventory that you've inventoried and pictured and processed. And we take it from there and we get it online. But what each one of our clients does is they will take that time, especially if you're spending a good amount of money on a car from the auction, you know, you're getting those parts because you know a WRX engine's worth $7,000. So you're going to buy that from the auction, have somebody that hopefully knows what they're doing, inventory the parts on the car, go through that car. And uh, I like, I heard a term once someone called it finding the money. And oh, I wow. love that term because when I would inventory, I wouldn't just go through the motions you know, they, they, uh, they give us tools to put the parts in uh, to inventory them with. So mm-hmm. I used to print it out on a piece of paper and go out there with the guy, circle the parts, and sit down at a DOS-based computer and input them into the system. <laughs> so now with technology the way it is, they download that worksheet that I used to print out on paper. And some of the paper on green bar paper was that thick. Right. And a box right. of that green bar paper was a lot of money. Wow. So, when we would inventory a Ford truck, I mean, the printout was like that thick. It was outrageous. <laughs> so now it, you put them into a tablet and you basically select and input the parts as you put them in. Uh, you take a picture of it at point of inventory and that puts it into your system. So that's what these, uh, what these clients do is they get those parts in there. And then again, once they have that done and they price all the stuff and then the pictures and all the inventory, we take it from there with the tools provided to us to get them onto eBay so we can sell them there. Wow. So there's a lot of software involved in what you're doing. I guess that was a mm-hmm. big learning curve when you were doing this or starting to do this. Yeah. 
uh, I often like to tell the stories. Like I said, we had a DOS based computer um, and eventually went to Windows, you know, Windows World. Yeah. And my dad had never used a computer that was Windows. So when he had to use a mouse, he was using two fingers <laughs> to push it around. <laughs> but then you're going to have to, you're going to have to figure do something out. different. <laughs> yeah, you got to figure it out real quick. So he's, he's still around, he still works in the industry. Uh, and he is the fastest one-figured keyboard typer I've ever met. <laughs> so that is a skill. He, he knows enough just to be dangerous. <laughs> wow. Wow. That is awesome. Yeah. So have, have you always uh, wanted to own your own business? So how did, like, where did that come from? Is that, uh, it seems like your dad, some of that comes from your dad, right? Yeah. he's. I've, I've always had a pretty good entrepreneurial spirit. Um, my parents would joke, I would sell candy on the corner of our street in the neighborhood. And, you know, the one day I came back with like $60 and they said, well, where the heck did you get that? I said, I just had a bunch of candy and I sold it to the neighbors. <laughs> and uh, I'm sure it was probably one, one neighbor who gave me $50 for a Snicker bar. But um, <laughs> I just always wanted to do some type of business. Um, even going back to my Tandy computer when we, I grew up in, in drums, uh, Pennsylvania. And uh, I remember making, trying to make commercials uh, on the computer and writing scripts and stuff like that. So I always <laughs> just kind of had that entrepreneurial spirit to do something. Mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm. uh, my dad had worked at a salvage yard in Hazleton. And I remember my first, uh, my first job to get an allowance, he would bring home these part tags and uh, they would put on the salvage parts to put them okay. away. So you would identify them later. You could go find them on the shelf. And uh, he had these really hard wires and they needed to be put on the tag and twisted. And then the guys would write what the part was and put them away on the shelf. Well, mm -hmm. that took a lot of time for the guys to do. So he would bring home a box of them and I would poke the crap out of my fingers with those really hard wires <laughs> to get some money on there. Um, so that was like my first job in this industry um, doing that. And it was for an allowance, but yeah. I just fell in love with it at that point. And I kind of always wanted to run my own business. And uh, my dad ended up selling his business. Um, so I never really got a chance to run that probably when I was about 17 years old. Okay. Um, so I, at that point was pretty young. I didn't have a lot of input, you know, on, on the family business at that point, just because mm -hmm. I was so, so young and just out of school. Um, so I never really got a chance there, but, um, I had worked in the industry and I always wanted to, to run my own business and, and own a salvage yard. And I got pretty close to that with what I'm doing now. And it's funny how things work out because I absolutely love what I'm doing. I had always wanted to run a salvage yard. And at this point, I, I really enjoy what I'm doing. And I don't have that you know, need, that feel to, to run a salvage yard, running this business that I've started because I kind of get to see and do it all without yeah, some without... of the headaches that, that are involved with that. Because, you know, again, when you're dealing with salvage vehicles, you have to dispose of that oil. You have to dispose of the tires. You know, there's mm -hmm, four tires, mm -hmm. five tires on every car. So, you know, that was always a struggle within our industry. And I just don't have to deal with that. Now, my business obviously comes with different types of struggles. Um, but you know, that's just something that that it's just not I have to worry about. So you guys like made an industry that wasn't tech savvy into something that's tech savvy, really, um, I mean, guess pivoted that whole thing into something that could be done online and what people are now ordering online. So they can, they have their like pick of like all these salvage yards all across the country, basically that they could get their product from, or do people usually just pick someplace close by? Like, yeah, it's, it's funny. Uh, my wife, you know, my wife's friends for the longest time thought I was a mechanic. Oh. <laughs> and, you know, they, they didn't know what our industry is or what it does, or they would call a car dealership or call AutoZone or Pep Boys for parts. And they just didn't know, you know, what we did existed. So um, uh, let me back that up. I'm not a mechanic. You don't want me fixing anything. I can take apart <laughs> cars, no problem, but you don't want me fixing them. I can take them apart. I won't put them back together. Um, right. yeah. You know, so uh, oh, I lost my train of thought. <laughs> Well, taking it from tech to um, like yeah. from non-tech to tech, and then I guess selling parts across the country, I get it could happen, right? I mean, yeah, you, this, so and it's it's funny how many how many salvage yards still aren't on the platform of, at all online, mm -hmm. and you know, one of the old business saying is adapt or die, and mm -hmm, you mm -hmm. know, it's, it's the cars are getting harder to get, 
Um, if you're not taking full advantage of your inventory or just going through the motions and just putting a motor transmission in and not all the other parts and, you know, not the, the $400 subwoofer that's in the trunk of some of these fancy cars and stuff like that. So yeah, utilizing this, the tech that we have and, and to put it online, it opens it up to the entire world. Yeah. I mean, we're not yeah. just selling stuff within this country, you know, we'll sell stuff. And, uh, one of the nice programs that eBay has, um, is a global shipping program. So, okay. you know, there's certain types of parts that we can send to Erlanger, Kentucky, which is a pretty large hub, uh, from my understanding within the country that they'll then forward those out of the country for you. So Got if you've it. ever sold anything online, you have to ship it out of the country. It's kind of a pain in the butt, um, you know, with forms and stuff like that. Sure. So basically you send it to Kentucky and eBay sends it out of the country for you. So that's wow. pretty nice. Uh, yeah. And if you don't take advantage of that to me, it's just silly. Yeah. Yeah. So you um you started your business and it was just you, right? I mean, did were you doing this um on the side while you were still working? Did you just, how did that transpire for you? Yeah, that's that's exactly what it was. Um I had uh, started, you know, working at Salvage Arts doing their inventory and doing their eBay. I had talked to different people and they found out, you know, hey, I was doing eBay. And this was early on when not a lot of people were doing eBay. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um so they would say, "Hey, can you can you train us? Can you tell us how to do this? You know, can you come work for us? And that was just me at that point, you know, and I worked uh, at, a, at a place and I would go and teach people and train people and, and talk to them. So this was sort of a side gig, a side hustle, um, you know, and then that one person turned to another person. And mm-hmm. then I would train someone at their facility. And then that person would leave, uh, flake out, you know, whatever. They just, they just left and they go, well, listen, you know, can you just run this for us? We're already buying the cars. We're doing the inventory. We're taking the pictures. We're doing everything on our end. Can you just handle, you know, the eBay side of it, the online side of it? And I said, well, yeah, sure. I can do that. You know, I, I have a job, uh, made sure the job I was working at, you know, as long as it doesn't conflict with what you're doing here in the day. So I would go home at night and I would do that for uh, probably about two or three different salvage yards. Uh, at night I would go and, and clock out of work and clock into work and you know, work till 11, 12 o'clock at night, um, checking their emails and, and listing their stuff to eBay and just kind of just constantly working throughout the whole day, um, with that stuff. And I'd get up before work, you know, at four thirty, five o'clock in the morning and I would check all their messages to make sure before I left for my actual job that all their messages were answered, um, and get some stuff listed to their eBay. And I would go to my job and they'd come home and rinse and repeat. Um, so yeah. I did that probably for a good year and a half, two years until, you know, those two or three yards turned into 10. Wow. And then the was 10 that yards, just word know, of mouth or were you now pushing that, um, a little, a little like bit networking of both. and both? Okay. Yeah. A little bit of both. I definitely, you know, once the side hustle turned into, you know, me doing this full time, that's right. really where I start pushed in, you know, pushed all in with trying to get more clients and reach out and hit the ground and, hit conferences and stuff like that. Right. Um, so, but yeah, it just started with me. Um, I have four people working for me now. Um, awesome. Obviously I kind of oversee everything, but yeah, it did, it did in the beginning, just start with me. And then, uh, you know, that just gets a little overwhelming, especially when you, um, you know, you're just by yourself. So at some yeah. point it becomes a scaling necessity. So yeah, you need it or you're going to just burn out. Well, mm-hmm. you were, you were going from being, um, working for somebody and then side hustle is a second job, but then you're running a business that's a side hustle. So it's like three jobs now that you have is <laughs> you're like running, you know, running a business is a job in itself, you know, not counting the yeah. time that you spend doing the job. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I remember uh, my wife, Janet, she was like, you know, I'm like, Oh, I talked to another person. She's like, you know, can you handle all that? Yeah. I said, yeah, yeah. yeah, I'm going to have to. I mean, if, if I want this dream to come to fruition, you know, I, that's it. I like, I got, I got to go for it. I can't, uh, I guess be wishy-washy, you know, I gotta, I gotta push my foot on the gas and go. Just go. Yeah. Yeah. Do you run, uh, do uh, all of your employees, they work remotely? Do you guys work together? How do you, yep. how do you, I mean, you're, you're an online business with online and, you know, people working from home. So how do you manage all of that? Are you able to, do you have good processes in place for how to manage your, your employees and all that stuff? Yeah. I'm, I'm very lucky with the crew that I have. I mean, they're fantastic. They're all within this industry to some degree. Um, you know, one of them worked at another salvage yard um, and a couple of them uh, didn't come from the salvage yard, but one of them knew a little bit about it. 
So those are, they all work remotely. Um, you know, they all live in different states. And that's, that's a challenge. You know, my business is always nervous and worried about, you know, I, I don't know what they're doing right now. Mm-hmm, I'm mm-hmm. assuming they're working, you know, yeah. and they are, yeah. um, you know, but uh, that's, again, I'm so lucky that I, that I have a good crew that I trust. You know, I give them breaks. They tell me when they're leaving. If they have to shoot out to the bank, being at home, it's no problem. They'll stay on later. Um, They always go above and beyond, Um, you know, especially if they do have to shoot out real quick or something like that. I must, yeah, absolutely. Being online, you know, we might not have to answer something that second. So if they say, hey, can I shoot out for half an hour? I'll just clock out half an hour later or something like that. And I'm pretty easy going. So absolutely. And at the end of the day, if everything's done and everything's done properly, you know, I'm, I'm, Really, just glad you're happy. To have a well-oiled machine. The yeah. clients are happy. I'm happy. They're happy. You know, it just works out that way. It's, there's always bumps in the road. Um, yeah, but I, I'm just glad that that uh, I have that particular crew. Um, just they're really good, real trustworthy. Because um, it's scary when you go, hey, yeah, you're gonna work from home. I I just met one of them. I haven't even met one of the other guys, and you know, I've been talking to him for years now. <laughs> And, uh, and you haven't actually you know, physically I, met. <laughs> yeah. I, know, I mean, we've Zoomed and, you know, we talk on the phone almost every single day. Um, I just never actually met him. And I was going to meet him down in Texas when we went to the conference. Um, but he he couldn't make it. So I met the other guy down there. Um, so, yeah. So well, that's pretty wild. Uh, so when you started hiring people, how did that feel for you? Like, was that a really scary like time or like, how did you feel about that? Yeah, it, it was, it was, it was really scary. Um, you know, not knowing who you're going to get, but also, um, elation that I'm going to get some help. Hopefully, yeah. <laughs> you know, just, just knowing I'm not going right. to be, yeah, I'm not going to be spread so thin. Um, you know, we'll, we'll be able to be that much more responsive to a client. Whereas in the past, I was, well, here, let me check on that. I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Um, you know, which we would, but, Still, it's it's nice to just be there, kind of at their their beck end. So, um, yes, it's, it's kind of scary, you know, thought of payroll and all that stuff. Um, but you know, the if you get the right people on the bus, it's going to move. So, mm-hmm. you know, and hiring somebody and, and having that extra cost, you'd like to see a return on investment on a good employee. You know, where they're getting extra sales on the phone, or you know, hear from a client who says, "Hey, you know." Uh, this this person's been fantastic because I oversee things and obviously I talk to them, but I don't talk to everyone on the daily. So some mm-hmm. of the employees are more feet on the ground talking to the clients um, or the the feet on the ground at the salvage yard there, you know, because there's a manager there, but they oversee that stuff. So I'm not exactly involved with every day to day stuff, even though I check everything on Skype, mm-hmm. which mm-hmm. is how we communicate um, okay. through each other to touch on. Um, so yeah, in hiring those uh, those people is a little scary, but against you know relief that uh, you know I'm going to have some help and and good help. Yeah. How many wow. how many yards do you uh, do you service now? Uh, we're up to forty five salvage yards. Wow. And we have wow. a uh, we have one potential in Canada. I met at wow. the URG conference in uh, Texas, so uh, we can help people in Canada. I talked to some salvage yards in other countries, but. The tools that we use, they don't have them over there. Um, they might in the future. So it's really cool, you know, for me to have the vision of having my own business to, I would say, go international. But it's it's very cool to me um, to be able to help somebody, say, say in Canada, um, to do this. Yeah, that is so awesome. Yeah. It's great. Yeah. So when when you were starting out on your own, you had to make some really tough decisions as far as like, who to put on your team, not just within your payroll, but like who to hire, accountants, lawyers, uh, you know, payroll services. Um, any words of advice to anybody who is starting out, you know, it, it, looking at that in their future? You know, is there anything that you would say you learned from that whole process and like the growth of the business? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, find and hire people smarter than you. <laughs> yeah. at um, least in that particular arena <laughs> yeah 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 if, if you can uh, if you can afford to but yeah you know just pick who you're getting advice from um you know you guys have been a fantastic help uh in this Thank so you. you know somebody who knows what they're doing um you know and and listen and talk to everybody don't be afraid to ask questions you know mm-hmm. they always say any questions not a dumb question i mean seriously I, I ask dumb questions all the time. 
And it's the only way I'm going to learn. It's the only way you're going to learn. You know, if, if I'm talking to somebody else that's just starting out, um, you know, just, just find the right people and, and ask any question you can and um, just be on top of your stuff. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I hear you. So what are your, uh, you talked a little bit about, you know, going international. Um, do you have any other, um, you know, future goals or future, you know, aspirations for, for how you want to run, the, run the business or where, where yeah. you want to go? Um, yeah. I'm seeing, um, I'm seeing like envisioning, uh, you know, hiring some more uh, employees to do some more, I guess I want to call them tedious tasks. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, little, little jobs like dragging pictures and custom editing titles for an eBay listing or an online listing is very important. The tools we're provided, they give us, you know, an okay title for a part. Mm -hmm. Um, But with eBay, and eBay's ever-changing, you know, they're wanting us to customize more of that stuff. Um, So I really foresee in the future maybe having a small team of people to kind of just do those those tedious uh, small tasks, which I think, you know, would return uh, a a good, good amount of sales from it. Yeah. Wow, that's good. Yeah, so, so you're constantly changing like what you're doing because of the the whim of like eBay. Um, you know, how are you stay on top of that? <laughs> just just by like their announcements, like how does that that work? Yeah, ju- just recently, probably in the last six months, um, eBay Motors particular because we're doing car parts. Okay. Um, they had about two or three people in Motors department. They're based out of Utah, um, and I had contacts over there. So I would talk to those guys, but they were just two people dealing with the entire country. Mm-hmm. And this was just an eBay Motors. So eBay has different departments. Um, just in the past six months, eBay Motors has dumped, I think they said, almost $230 million into eBay Motors and advertising for eBay Motors. So if you notice, mm-hmm. you listen to the radio, you'll hear an eBay Motors commercial. You've never wow. heard of it. So in doing this, um, they hired uh, branch managers throughout the country. So I was assigned, luckily, you know, because we helped so many different people throughout the country, those two guys, you know, they split up some of the people within the country and they gave us a direct eBay, I don't know what the word is, consultant. uh, Representative or something like that. Yeah, He works for eBay. So, you know, that's something I didn't have before. Obviously, I could reach out to the contacts and I didn't want to bother them with every little thing. But Mm -hmm. now I have this, this rep and he goes, bother me with every little thing. So, you know, I get a, I have that, that that channel inside there, which is wonderful for our clients, because Mm -hmm. if there's something new or something changing coming, you know, we're kind of out front of it. Mm -hmm. Um, So item specifics is a new thing. There's many different specifics for car parts. Um, You know, so we know we have to change that stuff. So it's nice having that that contact over there at eBay to know if things change because things are always changing. I've been on eBay since 1999. Wow. Um, So almost at its inception. Wow. I think it started wow. in 98 or something like that. So, um, you know, it's it's so different from then what it is till now. And it's always changing. Yeah. And you just have to continuously adapt as well. And well, your, have, your industry is changing also. So you have to kind of handle both sides of the change. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. Go ahead, I was going to say, it's super important to have those contacts within the organization to be able to get the heads up on or to, to provide feedback to them to help you, um, you know, better, you know, better run your business and also help your clients. Absolutely. hundred percent. We just had an issue with the, a billing issue and, you know, my client's very upset and I don't blame them. Well, my client's upset with me and I'm like, oh, well, you know, of course they are. You know, I'm their liaison to eBay, even though that wasn't my fault or anything. Yeah. So I got just the contact trying. on the horn and we got that straightened out right away. You know, the clients mm-hmm. are cool. Now, you know, now they're not as mad. <laughs> so, <laughs> Hopefully they'll get happy you know, again. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We don't want mad clients, you know, so. No. <laughs> yeah. Do you, do you have a lot of competition in your industry for what, you know, what you are doing? No, that's, uh, as far as I know, there's a couple other guys doing it. Um, so, you know, when I first started doing this, there was just one other guy that I, that I didn't know of, um, which is kind of, unique for what we're doing you know here I, and mm-hmm. of course here i'm thinking i'm the on the call it's the greatest idea in the world no one's done this <laughs> and then you know you start to to hear about other people um as far as i know it's just one other guy on the scale of our level got it um you know there are some smaller people that 
might help like I was doing in the beginning. Yep. And I talked to some of them. I go, how, how the heck do you do that for so many different people? I can, I can barely manage two. Well, uh, I think that that comes down to like the process, right? So like your process that you created and how you handle it, did you have to create that yourself? Like, did, were you creating that as you went along? Like, how did that? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Just, and again, our processes of how we run an account, you know, for the most part, it might not be run that way. So obviously we butt heads with people and how they may have run it, or it's easier when they've never done it. But mm-hmm. so far, you know, what what plans we put in place and all that stuff, you know, it works for the clients mm-hmm. across mm-hmm. the board. We custom tailor them, you know, eventually to them. But the the processes I put in at the core, you know, with account settings and how we manage clients and how we manage um, uh, buyers on eBay and stuff like that, that, that core is there. And I didn't maybe necessarily on purpose put the plan together. It's just how I think it should be run. And, and you were I, laying the groundwork, even though you didn't realize it. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, it, and it just works. And again, that's, that changes daily that, you know, yeah. I adapt with that. Uh, but at the base of it, you know, it's about giving our clients the best support um, and care that we can give them. And then also mm-hmm. taking care of the buyers, um, you know, because we're the face of that company online. You know, yeah. even though they're buying off of eBay and that's a large company, you know, they're buying off, you know, the, the local mom and pop shop on eBay and, you know, we're their customer service rep. So we want to make sure that they're taken care of too. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, it's, it's, it's really an interesting, um, you know, industry and what you're doing. And it's, it, it, there's a lot of, there's a lot of ways it could go wrong, but it, it's, <laughs> yeah. you're, you're doing, you're doing an excellent job for your, for your clients yeah, it's, it, it can be a lot to juggle um you know it's it's really all i've ever done I'm not too good at too many things but you know again doing this pretty much my entire life um you know it just seems to work and it uh, fits you work out for clients. yeah yeah yep. yeah so you're taking on new clients when they're they're ready to come on board with you and you're just going to continue to grow your team then um to help satisfy that and Yep. Yep. At, at some point, you know, you kind of think like, do I want to be picky choosy? You know, cause you'll, your phone blows up and you go to conferences and, um, you know, it's like, at what point do you scale it where it's like, all right, well, if I get on 10 more clients, I'm going to need two or three more employees. Yeah. You're deciding um, that. Yeah. You know, like, or is it worth it? So we do, you know, we do have a little bit of, I would say questionnaire where I'd say, well, how many cars are you buying? What type of cars you're buying? We want to vet the, the client to see and maybe give them a good idea of what, you know, uh, what they might be looking at sales. And it might not be a fit, you know, because you have to pay us for our service. So if right. you're only doing X amount of cars, you're only buying this much, you know, you're kind of just buying 98 list sabers or something like that. You know, it might not be a good fit. Um, uh-huh. Not that uh-huh. you can't make money on a 98 list saber, but, uh, you know, it's just, just vetting the client to just to see. So you've kind of identified your kind of ideal client so that you would be able to say, okay, this is kind of the, the client that we need that would fit into, that would warrant our services um, and, and be able to be a good fit for you, your company as well. Yep. Yep. Exactly. You know? And I mean, if it's, if it's a smaller client that maybe it wouldn't make sense for, you know, I'm absolutely here. If you ever need a phone call or something like that sure. um, to, to help out and, you know, just maybe guide them or tell them uh, some advice, stuff like that. So, or if it is, you know, a, a larger client, um, you know, we'll, we'll maybe point more guns in their direction um, just to just, you know, they might just need more attention um, mm-hmm. just because it might be a larger one. So yeah, it's, it kind of a case by case basis. Yeah. Yeah, of course. Wow. Yeah. And that's part of the growth and the evolution of, of your, of, you know, your business, you want to, you want to, you know, at first you want to take whoever is going to come on board to to to, to fill your time <laughs> and to and to you know pay you, um, but then after a while you, you you grow a team and now your time's only so so much that you need to have focus. Um, you, you know, accountants go through that. You know, a lot of different service based industries do that. Um, just identifying who you want to sell to and who who you want to take on. It's uh you know it's important to, to kind of evolve that. Yeah. 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 That's, that's for sure. I mean, even now, you know, with certain clients, you, uh, you know, uh, everyone I've ever had, uh, I've kept and, uh, you know, maybe if say it was just starting, it's like, all right, it's a smaller account, but 
you know, they, they do okay numbers. They're happy with our service. And I think I heard somewhere, sometimes you got to dance with the one that brought you. So, you know, <laughs> <laughs> that's true. That's true. That is accurate. <laughs> well, I, yeah, I mean, I, I think it's great to hear about your journey and how you um, have evolved the business into, and it's amazing to me that it's an industry that really, I mean, the salvage industry, like you said, has always been there, but this is like a brand new twist on it. And um, you're basically like trailblazing the way. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. So that's pretty wild. Yeah, it's 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 crazy to see how it's changed so much, you know, from going from uh, a notebook inventory. Right. And, and really what the old guys used to do is they would just know what was out back. Oh, yeah, they knew. <laughs> really yeah. even, it was all really in their head. <laughs> yeah. So I know I guess I'm out there. But, you know, if you're going to really have a successful salvage yard business, I mean, you got to be computerized. And that was that was a big thing for the guys in the 70s, you know, spending money. You know, I want to put $20,000 into a computer system and put the inventory on there. That wasn't a thing. You know, yeah. now you can't imagine doing business like that. So it's crazy to see. Even even that wasn't that long ago to think about this stuff. So, you know, seeing where the salvage industry is going, um, it's pretty wild. Uh, the electric cars are all the rave right now. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, my dad always joked. And he said, well, one day if they sell flying cars, we'll sell flying car parts. That's right. You know, There's still so, car parts. You know, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Now it's like electric stuff, you know, they're going to sell. It. So, you know, those have batteries and um, the game's always changing and you just got to change and adapt with it. Yeah. So pivoting and adjusting, being flexible is a pretty big takeaway for uh, what you're doing, isn't it? Absolutely. Yeah. So someone, someone told me early on um, to go to the conferences and I know you guys do that stuff as well. Mm-hmm. And I'm such a nerd with this stuff. Like my wife will be like, I'm like, you want to go? It's in Disney. It's in New Orleans. She's like, I'd rather watch paint dry. I'm like so excited to go and just sit there and listen on a Saturday. You know, it's Disney and yeah. I'm inside of a hotel, like geeking out, listening to all these people talk. But you learn so much. Me, said, yeah. Yeah. Someone told me, said, go to these things, you know, early on, uh, you know, when he didn't have money or maxing out credit cards to go. He goes, if you can drive to save a plane ticket, drive. You know, if you don't have money to stay in a hotel, sleep in your car in the parking lot. He's like, get yourself into those conferences. That's where the people who are going to grow are going. And he would say, go there and and listen to those people and learn and just be a sponge. And again, surround yourself with smarter people. You know, everyone in that room is smarter than I am. So I want to go listen and learn from. Yeah. That's awesome advice. I'm jotting them down so that we can use, you know, as snippets, because I think that's really important information that small business owners tend to forget. And we, we say this often, you know, you feel like you're by yourself, but usually there's other people in the industry and you really need to, you know, become friendly with them and um, learn from other small business owners. And that's what we're hoping to bring to this as well. Absolutely. You know? Yeah. yeah. yeah we, you know, it's, it's funny. You can't, you can't sometimes just call someone and they're actually going to give that information. Like yeah. you go, to, you go to one of these class, you know, one of these conferences and you, know, you sit down in these rooms and people are just giving out the information. Yeah. And they're just a, forthcoming. <laughs> yeah, and I had a guy, so I had a Hayden Davis. He's an editor of a magazine in the UK. And he said, he came over here and he went to one of the conferences and he goes, Oh, let's see what this is about. And he goes to one of the, the classes and he goes, that guy just told all the secrets, all the secrets. <laughs> what a moron. And he goes, it's not a secret one, anymore. That guy just gave up all his secrets too. And he goes, you know what? It's, it's just further furthering the industry, you know, but you probably exactly. can call them on the phone. And they're going to tell you that stuff. But if you go to these shows and conferences and learn, you know, people are more than willing to share, even though we're all in the same competition, you know, everyone wants to sell their part over somebody else's. But that's the one thing I love about this, this industry is, you know, you can go to those conferences and they'll give you, uh, they'll give you great information that, you know, you'll always take something from those to apply to your business. Yeah. Yeah. You're not the first uh, business owner that we've talked to that, that has, that has done that kind of thing, going to conferences and learned a lot from other people in the industry. I mean, you know, we, we, we keep talking to business, small business owners and there's always mentors. There's always people that they're learning from. Um, even if they've been in business 30, 40 years, they're still um, seeking out the advice and counsel. Cause you know, you don't want to be, by yourself you don't want to feel like you're you can't you know you can't reach out and, and get yeah. some help 
Yeah. This, so. you know, one thing when I deal with my, my team is this is, I'll tell them, well, this is how I think, you know, this should be done. What do you think? You know? This oh is yeah. I'm, getting the feedback you know, from your team. Yeah. I'm like, do, do you guys think of a better way to, to go about this or something like that? So there will never be an instance where I'm like, well, this is just how it's done. And this is my way. You know, I'll absolutely ask everyone for their opinion on something um, to see, you know, maybe I'll say, hey, you know, that, that looks pretty good. Um, but always want to get their input on something. And I think that's important too, for a business owner to, uh, to listen to their crew. Yeah. I hear you. Yeah. I think that is really important as well. Yeah. Especially if they're on the front lines, like they are with, with clients and, um, you know, managing those relationships. I mean, they know, they know what <laughs> the, the, your clients are telling them they're, you yes. know, so you got to get to provide that feedback or seek that feedback out. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. One of the things that we do um, as a firm, we do some growth planning, which is strategic planning. And it is absolutely imperative that you talk with your people, um, especially if you're looking at ways to grow or change or have different goals in mind. Um, your people are going to help direct you on what needs to be fixed because most of the time they know um, and they know what the like you said, the customers are saying, they know what the process is doing, are there hiccups? You know, they are the ones that are in that day-to-day. Now, some of us are in some of the day-to-day as well and and kind of have a sense, but, you know, it's different when it's it's not your baby, you know, when it's mm-hmm. coming from somebody else, the, the perspective is different, so. Yeah, yeah. And I I'd probably just like everyone else, I had issues with you know, relinquishing some duties and mm. um, certain ways I did things and how I listed things to eBay and stuff like that. Um, still got to be open to, to suggestions and, and learning. Yeah. yeah. Again, the flexibility, right? <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, we thank you for joining us today on our podcast and we have learned so much from you and uh, about this industry that, you know, is out there that people just may not have thought about. And, uh, you know, we thank you for, for joining us. Absolutely. Thank you guys so much for having me. It was fun. Yeah. Thanks, Matt. All right. See you guys. If you find this podcast helpful, then like, subscribe and follow us on social media.